All right, guys, so I'm kind of in the middle of installing and testing some new, I'm pretty sure from what I've seen, basically world first geometry handling mods, upgrades for the N60 IFS Hilux. So these are the ones with the torsion bar fronts. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's the same across all the models, but basically coming from where I've come from with cars that handle really well, brake really well, hence why I've done all the brake stuff. Um, getting into this thing, it's like, it's not confidence inspiring at all, which I'm sure a lot of you guys would agree with me as well, uh, especially once you lift them. Um, the main problem is why they feel so sloppy and shit. Yes, people will probably put them down to just being an old car, but that's not the issue. The issue is by, when you raise it especially, and a lot of people also don't know how to do a proper alignment on these to start with, but that's a whole nother problem. Once you raise these cars, you lose your caster. So the caster is basically the angle at which the, the hub sits and that, that affects how the car kind of holds and um, you know, just drives on the road. It's, it's what gives you your kind of return to centre when you're you know, turning a corner. Um, it keeps your wheels kind of planted and the car tracking nice and straight. So this car has always felt really shit. It's slowly getting better, but I think I finally hit the nail on the head, hopefully. So if you're seeing this video, things have been a great success. Great success. Because I'm still actually just installing all this stuff to test. So I'm gonna hold on to this footage because I'd rather show you guys this stuff once it's all fresh and not beaten up and all dirty. But um, yeah, I'm gonna hold on to this footage and if everything works out, which I'm pretty confident it will, um, you'll be seeing this video and these things will be coming to or on the market. So what have I got? The first thing I've developed and I put on last weekend is a relocated bottom ball joint. So essentially that moves the bottom of the, the spindle, hub, whatever you want to call it, forward, um, keeping the same point at the top. Uh, that's my next thing. So that itself, um, because I've got the wheel alignment machine here, that went from basically zero caster to positive two and a half to 2.6, uh, depending on how you play with the eccentric bolts. Um, I've obviously got my control arms out at the moment because uh, I'm putting some new bushes in them. I'll get to that in a sec. Um, so there's those. I'll give you guys a rundown on them in a sec. And then there's also these, uh, which I'm very, very happy with. They look very sexy. They're a fully adjustable upper ball joint. So they use an N70 um, adjustable upper ball joint. So they're really readily available and they're cheap and they work really well. And then a custom billet bracket, which I've designed and had made. So I've got a prototype set that I'm running on my car now. And I'm pretty confident these are gonna work beautifully. So anyway, I'll grab the camera off the tripod and I'll bring it over and kind of show you guys how they're set up on the car. And then um, I've still got the other side to put on and then I'll also pull off one of the bottom ball joints and kind of throw it on the table and show you guys how it works and how to install it. It's pretty basic stuff. Like usual, a lot of my time has gone into developing these, especially the bottom ones. There's a lot of tight tolerances that need to be bang on, which is uh, quite hard. And I took quite a gamble um, outlaying quite a bit of money to get these made as my prototype because I couldn't really test it unless it was the actual thing. So it's looking good, a slight bit of modification, but that'll be corrected on the next, the next batch. But anyway, let's have a look. All right, so we'll start down here at the lower ball joint. So this again is a factory N70 lower ball joint. So it's all, it's all off the shelf stuff. Um, obviously you won't need to ever change the bracket, but if the ball joint does get flogged out, you can put a new one in. Um, so the, the principle is you can see that it's, it's kind of off, offset. So that's center, that's normally where it is. And we're offset as far as we possibly can with the, the hole in there is, yeah, I've, I've done a lot of testing on this and this is as much as I can get, which is still a lot better than what I've ever been able to align on this car. So, so as you can see, it all bolts in pretty nicely. There's only a slight little bit of shaving that you need to do for this. So that's the bottom one. Then we come up here to the top one. So this fits in there beautifully. And the other good thing is this basically acts as a um, spacer as well. So it's about a 50 mil, probably a little bit over. So the reason you need to usually run a ball joint spacer is to push your uh, arm back up so you've got more down travel and suspension articulation once you raise your vehicle. And it also works well in conjunction with a, a diff drop to kind of drop the diff and correct your CV angle as well. But 
these cars do ride like shit. And between you and me, I am actually gonna go solid axle on this um, eventually. But I kind of wanted to develop this stuff and see, see how far and how much better I could make this stuff on the IFS front before I went to solid axle. So at least I've done the testing and development and I'm confident, if I am confident and everything works, then I'll be happy to go into production and sell these to you guys as well. All right, so we'll start off with the adjustable upper ball joint. So as you can see, this is all beautifully billet crafted. Uh, these are super strong and I have no doubt that they'll hold up to the rigors of off-road off -road use. Um, so you can see here, it's obviously got the height here to space the ball joint out, which is what you want for a lifted vehicle. And then you've got the kind of sideways adjustment. So that will fix your camber. And then you can also loosen this off so you can then also kind of rotate that and lock it in, you know, wherever you want. So you could have even more caster or you could move it around and have less, less caster, but have the wheel more forward in the arch. Um, so there's, there's basically almost unlimited adjustment for this, which is kind of why, why I've gone with it. So that's it. And then just a little bush to adapt the, the gap between the the rubber boot and the top of the control arm because this just sits a little bit higher. And then I've got a, a sleeve taper adapter. So these are a much smaller taper and much smaller thread than the, the factory one. So that just kind of sits in there and adapts it out. That works perfectly. And yeah, that's basically all there is to it. So then I've just whipped the lower ball joint off. So this is quite a creation, this one. It was quite hard to get this to fit in the packaging restraints. So, as you can see, it's all, all engraved and um, you know which one's which. So, as I said, these are a um, N70 lower ball joint, so easy to get off the shelf. So, as you can potentially see, the factory ball joint is more, I think it's over about 10 more mil or so in the center. So, this one has been pushed to the absolute outer extremities. Um, it does sit at roughly the same height, it may be a little couple of mil taller just because it's a hard the packaging was just really hard and then it's got this cap so I've got a thread in there for a jacking bolt so you can actually if this does get jammed up with mud or whatever you can just wind a bolt in it it'll jack off stop laughing guys and then this was where the real kind of thing is so the reason we got this is basically you can't rely just on the bolts to hold this in because because of all the the radial movement it needs to have like a locking collar like the factory one as you can see and then the same thing as the upper these the threads are the same size but the taper is slightly different so i've got some more taper adjusters that just slip on there so that will adjust and take up the slack in the taper and they work really well so if you are swapping these between control arms or whatever make sure that you take this off and keep that because that's very important otherwise it'll be flopping around and will be very useless. Yeah, I'm really happy with these. I've driven on these already and they, they make a big difference once you uh, correct your wheel alignment after doing so. Nonetheless, we'll, uh, we'll go and install these and uh, I'll give you a bit of a look. So when it comes to installing these, it's actually pretty straightforward. You've just got to basically unbolt your existing bottom ball joint, uh, which is all basic stuff. I'm not gonna bother showing you guys how to do that. The main thing is just to make sure that this mating surface is clean and also the inner diameter of this uh, locating spigot. And yeah, it's literally just a matter of bolting it on. So the order in which you install this is up to you. Obviously I've got the lower control arm off at the moment, so um, it's obviously pretty easy. So whether you put kind of the, the taper into the ball joint first and then try and squash it in, um, doesn't matter. As long as you've got your top plate and everything in. So once you've got all this surface cleaned up and everything's kind of ready to go, just kind of put this up, locate it, check that it fits okay. Put a couple of bolts in so it locates it where it's gonna sit. And then you can kind of just get an idea of how much you need to shave off this existing corner of the spindle. So this, as you'll see later, this is kind of what hits when you're on full lock. If you kind of roll it back over that way, um, you'll get an idea once you've got it on and you're turning the vehicle. Once you've done that, obviously give it a bit of pain if you want and then you can go through and install it. So just get the four bolts and just get them started. 
Um, put a little bit of kind of medium strength Loctite on each one of these, just to make sure. And then torque them down to 60 Newton meters. And then there you go, just like that, that is bolted on. So super easy. The only thing to make sure is that when you bolt it to your lower control arm that you have your little adapter, which will adapt the taper seat. So then once you've got your bottom ball joints in, um, if you're only running the bottom ball joints, you will probably notice that your wheels are a fair bit out of whack. So this is easily corrected. It's just a matter of adjusting the two eccentric bolts uh, for the lower control arm. So in a nutshell, um, the rearward one, if you wind that out and wind the front one in, that's gonna basically give you more caster and push the wheel kind of forward. Um, but it's just a matter of playing around. When we did this, uh, it was a bit whack, but once we kind of threw it on the alignment rack and loosened them all off and kind of neutralized them, everything came back. So straight after doing this, the, the toe was way out, the camber was also out of whack on both sides. But yeah, like I said, you may have to, depending how far your wheel alignment place is or how good you are with doing it, you'll be able to have a play around and kind of get it looking right and driving well enough for you to go to your local wheel alignment place or whatever. And then it's just a matter of doing a normal wheel alignment um, using the two eccentric adjusters on the, the lower control arm. I'm pretty happy with how the bottom has turned out, especially I haven't tested the top yet, which we'll get to in a sec, we'll install that. All right guys, so now we'll go about swapping out the factory upper ball joints for the nice adjustable ones. So as you can see, I've already got a two inch ball joint spacer in it, so it will be sitting at the same height, so I won't be gaining any increases um, from down travel by having a spacer, because I've already got it. But for those of you who don't have a spacer and you're going straight to this, you'll get basically two birds with one stone. Well, multiple birds with one stone really, because You've got the caster adjustment, the camber adjustment, and also the extra height so you can move your control arm back up and have more, more down travel. So uh, it's just a matter of stripping off the factory top ball joint, which is pretty straightforward, and plonking this in. That's basically it. So obviously, because I don't have the lower control arm in at the moment, I'm just gonna use my transmission jack to support the the wheel under the brake rotor, just so that when I take this off, it's not just gonna all drop away. But um, for me, it's just a matter of undoing these four bolts. Uh, it'll be the same for you, depending whether you've already got a spacer or not. But that's all easy stuff, so we'll skip all that. So a little trick for those who don't know, uh, for getting ball joints off, especially without using a, a ball joint puller and fucking up the rubber boot, which they normally do, is you can actually hit it on the side here. You can see they've got some flats on either side, so. Just like that, she's loose. So depending on whether you've had ball joint spaces before, I think you may have to slightly bend some of this. I'm not sure, because my car came with them, so I'm not sure exactly how they are factory, but it'll become pretty evident pretty easily. You may have to slightly bend this down to fit the uh, new adjustable top mount in, but for me, they fit straight in, so I'll leave that up to you guys. But the main thing is to make sure that the the abutment face up here is nice and clean, which you can see that it still is from where the ball joint spacer was, so that's good. And then obviously just clean off these on top. So I'll just get a wire brush and kind of clean all that crap off. Also along here where the seat is, and uh, then we can get to installing the new one. So just to check whether you do need to actually modify this, just kind of offer it up and um, wind some of the bolts in. So you can see there that I've got those bolts started. The thing sits in there, it sits up nice on its abutment face, so I know that I'm gonna be good. So just do that with yours to check um, what you need to clearance if you need to. I'm not sure, I'll leave that up to you guys. But I have tried to make it as small as possible so that it can fit without modification or as minimal as possible. So that's good, I know that's gonna fit. So basically now it's time to just install it. So I'm pretty sure that the ball joint 
will be closest to the factory position with it, kind of the nut out this side and the ball joint over this way. So just kind of put that in loosely. Um, remember that you need your adapting spigot so you can, you can put that into the, the top of the spindle. That should sit nice and flush. Um, like so, that fits nicely. That'll pull down snug once you tighten this up. And then obviously just your little spacer bush there. So to, again, depending how you're doing this, um, may be different. Obviously I've got no lower control arm at the moment, so it may be a little bit different to you. I find that if you just get a bit of a pry bar and kind of lift, lift this arm up on the um, torsion bar, then that kind of allows you to get that in. So now I can kind of just lift up the jack and push this up to where it needs to go. And then once it's close, you probably just have to slightly rotate that ball joint so it allows that, that kind of face to abut nicely. And then just get your bolt in. You may need to slightly move this around depending how good your first attempt is. Just the main thing is don't go winding these in if they're a bit a bit skew with, otherwise you'll obviously strip the threads. So then once you're confident you've got these nicely started by hand, you can go and uh, tighten them down. And then once this is seated nicely and you're pretty confident, come through and torque these down to about 30 to 40 Newton meters. as you can see. And it's always good practice just to go around a couple of times just to make sure that it was seated properly and that when you've kind of torqued it down in the first sequence, it hasn't thrown something out in the other sequence. So that's looking good. And then just give it a final kind of visual inspection, make sure that the abutment face and everything is all seated and looking good, which it is. So, I think we're pretty much ready to roll. And then the only thing you gotta do now is just put the castle nut back on, or well, the new, new castle nut. Um, when I give you guys a kit, I'll probably give you a washer to put underneath this, just cause when it winds in, it's just a little bit, a little bit deep for the, the relief for the uh, cotter pin. So yours will come with a M12 washer that goes between this castle nut and here, but I'm waiting on delivery of mine, so I'll just put these in like this for now. So now, as you can see, we've got adjustment in and out like so. And then adjustment wise, it's a 30 mil nut. So most of you probably won't have a 30 mil spanner, so you'll have to get one of them. But depending where it is um, kind of in its arc. So remember, you can have basically the ball joint facing this way, or you can spin it around and have it facing this way, or you can rotate it, have it kind of hanging out here or out the side there. Uh, all depends. You've got basically infinite geometry uh, adjustment with these, which is really cool, and which is why I like them. Um, so I'll just kind of tighten this up for now. So you may be able to get a socket through the top, depending which way you have it. Um, until I get my lower control arms in, I'm not sure which way it's gonna go, but I'm thinking it may be this way, but we'll see. I'm actually considering making like a little crow's foot, a 30 mil crow's foot that fits in there and you can get a, um, a half inch socket or something onto up here to, to wind that, which uh, would be pretty handy, I'd say, but it's kind of one of those things, once it's kind of set, you just leave it and then you do the, the bottom fine tuning with the, um, the eccentric bolts. All right guys, so as you can see, the install of these and even the ones on the bottom is uh, pretty straightforward. And um, I'm hoping, I've already tested the bottom as I've said a million times, but these ones I'm waiting until I get my lower control arms back on, then I can throw it on the alignment rack and get it all aligned and then take it for a drive. And hopefully with some nice new poly bushes, which will stiffen the whole front end kind of caster camber alignment up. Um, and with the full adjustability of the top and also the offset bottom for the caster, uh, everything should be riding as best it could possibly be, basically. So I don't know if I also mentioned the other good reason for 
These, especially for those who are running bigger tires, in particular 33s like myself, you actually need to get as much caster as possible to try and move that tire forward. Otherwise you're scrubbing on like the, the back of the wheel arch. So that's another plus. Um, whether you're after a really good steering wheel alignment or whether you just want to fit new tires or bigger tires, um, yeah, it's a win-win. And like I said, if you're seeing this video, Things have worked really well and they're gonna be for sale. So if you wanna grab yourself some of these, I'll probably sell the bottoms as a kit and the tops as a kit. And uh, yeah, you can head over to www.boostedbuiltgarage.com and um, have a look under the Hilux uh, four wheel drive uh, custom parts section. You'll see it on the, the main page of the website. So. All right, and if you haven't already, go check out my other videos and have a look at some of my other products as well. So I've got the rear disc conversion for these. Actually, I'll show you them in a sec. Rear disc conversion and also the transfer case handbrake. So I've actually got them on the car, so I might as well just take the camera and show you them anyway. So rear disc conversion, these things work really well. Sold a shitload of them. And I've actually just swapped over to the new black billet brackets, which you can hopefully see. So they're super sexy. And then of course there is the transfer case handbrake, which has been working really, really well. So yeah, happy days. All right guys, so I've got my new bushes. I've got the lower control arms back in and uh, it's looking pretty promising. Let's have a look. So you can see there, we've got the bottom ball joint all back in. And then we've got the upper all in. So this is how it's obviously gonna sit on the vehicle. Now that we've got the upper control arm spaced up, which is thanks to the offset on the adjustable upper ball joint, you can see that we've got a, a you know, probably about an inch or 25 mil gap between the down travel bump stop and the underside of the control arm. What we'll do is throw it on the alignment machine and kind of see how it, how it looks. I'm guessing by just siding it, I'll probably have to move this adjuster in a little bit to give it a bit more negative camber, but once the kind of suspension straightens out we'll uh we'll see but exciting times all right so i've just spent the last whew, probably six hours playing with the alignment on this testing all the different settings and kind of just getting a kind of idea on what what affects what so i'll um i'll give you guys a rundown on basically what i found it's looking really good um so we'll go have a look so Best investment ever, going halves in bend with this wheel alignment machine, as you can see over there. So I've just been basically playing around with everything. Um, I'll try and sum it up, but basically with that, with that top ball joint, you can have it kind of straight and just go in and out, or you can rotate it and also go kind of in and out. Um, there's lots of adjustment, but basically I tried around, I started off with it straight. Uh, obviously you can do camber, and also the kind of arc that it goes on also plays with caster a little bit and it also plays with your toe in and toe out. So it's a bit of a fine line, but basically I'll start with the eccentric bolts. So the rear one is pushed all the way out and then the front one is pushed all the way in. So I've started with that setting on, on both and obviously I've got the new bushes so I know that everything's tight and gonna be staying in position. So essentially that moves the exaggerated, but that moves the control arm out that way. So that's pushing the wheel as far forward as we can, which in theory should give us more caster. But the main thing is for tire clearance, especially with 33s here. So that's my thing. So normally when you do that, you'll end up with like a shitload of camber. Um, so that's why I've kind of gone with the adjustable top. So you can see in here, this is basically where I've got it set up. So it's straight. Um, the good thing is if you can get it set up this way, it's good because all the all the pressure on it kind of goes up straight into the main structural bit. So this is kind of working pretty well. So in a nutshell, rear one all the way out, front one all the way in, and then usually you'll get a shitload of positive camber, so the top of the wheel kind of leaning out. So then that's where the adjustable top ball joint comes in, as well as being a spacer as well. Um, you can actually lean that back in and correct it, which I've been doing. And I'll take you over to the computer and show you. So this is kind of the happy median. I could play around with it a bit more and maybe get a little bit better, but so for some reason the driver's side, I cannot get any more than two degrees. I did kind of offset the ball joint one click around towards the, 
the driver's seat or the back of the wheel arch. And that kind of went up maybe point, point 0.1 of a degree, but it wasn't worth it. So I thought I might as well keep them both straight. So there is something weird going on. I don't know whether something's fucked up when, if you remember when I bought this car, it had a, uh, the guy lost the front left wheel. So I don't know whether it's something to do with that. But nonetheless, I'm pretty happy with this. I'm about to lock it all off and uh, call it a day. But you can see the values there. Before I had like zero, zero, or even worse, it was probably like negative in some, some degree. I think this one might have been negative. This one might have been just on zero. So um, the alignment was really, really good just with the bottom ball joints. So they're the ones that really give the caster. And I guess the main thing is correcting the camber with the top ball joints. But you can play around with it. Depends how savvy you are. I guess if you are doing the alignment, or the alignment shop's doing it, you can play around with the eccentric bolts a bit, especially if you've got smaller tires that you're not worried about scrubbing. If you do buy these, be prepared that you probably have to do a kind of an adjustment uh, at home before you go to the alignment places so the car's not driving like absolute shit. You can get it pretty close by eye. It might take you a little bit of time. I did it actually first by eye and I got it pretty close. The handy thing is where the adjustable ball, ball joint ended up on the upper control arm, you can still get the socket through the hole and tighten it down. Um, what I'm gonna do, it's, it's tight and I can bump it around to fine tune it, but at the moment it's good. So what I will do once um, the, the toe is locked off, I'll end up pulling the front two wheels off and cranking that bolt really tight so it obviously can't move while we're driving. But anyway, I'll see you tomorrow. So it definitely holds the road better as you would expect with Caster. Uh, before, actually before we started recording, we're having a look. So after I finished the wheel alignment, um, so the last video you saw was last night. I came back in this morning and did it again just to make sure. Um, as I was saying, the driver's side, there's something weird going on with the caster. Um, so basically, when I pulled the wheels off to snug down the top uh, ball joint adjustment, um, I could visibly and even men visibly notice that the you could see the, the different angles of the top of the spindle where the yeah. upper ball joint... Yeah. Even I don't it. Yeah. yeah. So there is something, whether it's Ben, Ben said he actually bent one of his spindle upright. Yeah, the, at the top ball yeah. joint now. So, nonetheless, using the passenger side wheel as a good functioning normal setup, we're at about three, we've got probably between three to three and a half degrees of caster, which is pretty good, positive caster. So, the car definitely, the steering just feels more solid. Mm. I'll give you a drive when we come back from Dirty Bird. I reckon the ride's better with the um, torsion bar slacked off. Oh well, yeah, and we also found, I don't know if I mentioned, but we also found that the driver's side torsion bar was like, wound way up. Because they've put a different bottom ball joint in previously before I got it. So the ball joint heights were different, so I think they've wound that up to accommodate. Trying to level it out. Yeah, so it's probably also flogged a lot of other stuff out. I know the feel now you take a hard left hander compared to taking a, a hard right hander. That was a lot better than it's ever been, I think. Oh. 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 <laughs> Fuck the hell. Well, I think if you did that before, it probably would have done a tumble turn. <laughs> Under a quarter turn, it's good. More than a quarter turn, it's not. Yeah, so it gets past that tipping point. Yeah. So you reckon that it's? I reckon. Can well, I think it's because that because that spindle's fucked, or something's wrong on well, this then, side. Yeah, there's definitely something with that one if as well. If you've got a normal vehicle that's not fucked like mine, but I reckon um, um, potentially fucked. If you add another half a degree camber, it actually just turning into that driveway then is just a lot softer and mm. a lot nicer. 
which yeah. is nice. So all in all, it's, I think it's driving a lot nicer. Yeah. I just realised I saw my reflection in the side view mirror. I think I'm wearing the same shirt in all your videos. It's my shop shirt. G-Star. Might have to get some more. G-Star. Yeah. <laughs> Straight line's good. Yeah, so you're probably wondering why it's almost night time now. Um, the GoPro decided to stop working as we got back in the car from KFC. But lunch was good, thanks for asking. So, I'll tell you about dinner shortly. <laughs> yeah, we're actually going to get dinner now. But give us your feedback, Ben, because Ben's driven this a few times through different stages. So. Yeah, it's much, much, much better. Um, it's got a good cast to feel, so um, straight line. And, um, you know, for a drag link steering, just off centre is quite good too. It's pretty responsive. Don't get us pulled over because we look like we're driving drunk. <laughs> <laughs> so definitely the um, the first eight to quarter turn of the, of the wheel. It's good direction. Now you turn it, it's a nice move. Let's get some bigger corners on. It straight lines a lot better though. Yes. That's definitely oh, before a big it would never stay straight, it would always be either. Yeah. This or that. Twitchy. Now it's actually got that caster. This is the center. Yeah. And got... then outside of that feels like you're actually going outside yeah. of it. Yeah. So. It's much, much easier just to toodle along and straight line. Yeah, so it's definitely tracking a lot better. Um, the ride's much, much better after the, uh, the torsion yeah, bar adjustment. It definitely is. It rides, it rides like a car in terms of just the, sh the, bump, the yeah. bump and rebound. It does. It does feel after like a, a, a steeper um, turn. It does feel like the front end's finding itself a little bit, and that that could be the, um, the camber gain because of the caster. So the more yeah. caster you have, the more camber you gain on the turns. There's a lot of people with Mercedes just come fucking, barreling up yeah. when when you're here with you're here with like the A team's exoskeleton Armageddon vehicle, yeah. and that old mate in his 318 decides that he's going to squeeze past. I don't know if they're dumb or just arrogant. I'll probably be both. From both. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that one, that first one eighth of a turn is really good. Yeah. The main thing for me was just having it stay straight. Yeah. It's like good have that good feel on the road, which I've succeeded in. Um, it's going to be a lot nicer. It's such a less tiring to drive. Yeah. Steering response is good. The heel toe in this, it's pretty cool. Yeah. This is the Lamborghini of what we drive. <laughs> Once we get it back on the dyno, it'd be good to play with that off yeah. throttle. Yeah, definitely um, turning is much better, straight line's much better. Um, it, it's a bit different after 90 degrees of turn of steering angle. Yeah, that's where it's at. I reckon if we get that if side that was even. even I reckon it's a drive as good as any four-wheel drive. Right. But you can... I suppose the other thing that's a bit deceiving as well is it's got a lot of weight on the roof, which is yeah. partially of what you feel. Jesus, out to five grand! I guess in a nutshell, is it, is it, what would you say? It's at 75, 80%? No, I think it's it's definitely um, between 75 and 80, depending on what standards you set. Yeah. If you compare it to an 80 series or yeah, any sort of um, any sort of live axle um, four wheel drive, then except maybe a Land Rover because they drive really good actually for live axle. I think it's um, 80%, 80 to 82. 82? 82. 82, yeah, just to, just to get you over 80. Um, but if it's, if you're talking about your modern sort of 
IFS, then it's probably about 70 odd. Alright, let's get some down.